we want to sing this first one. It's called Hark the Herald Angels Sing. I'm sure it's very familiar with you. And uh, you know the word hark means to listen closely. And I want you to listen closely to the program tonight. I want, to hear, I want you to listen closely to the men who are going to give you an account of their encounter with Jesus Christ. They could not believe that it was Him. And I want you to listen closely because the story does not just end at the manger. Oh, we'll start there, but that's not where the story is going to end. And so when we sing Hark, the Herald Angels Sing, uh, just remember what that means all through the program. It means to listen, to listen closely. So let's lift our voices. Let's just kind of warm up and uh, just get in the Christmas mood. We're so glad that you're here. Hark, the Herald Angels Sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, joy the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. account in Luke chapter 2 says that, that the shepherds and, and also the, the, uh, the wise men and even the angelic hosts, they worshiped Christ and they celebrated this greatest birth announcement that we're going to share with you tonight. But what I love about the story is that when the angels appeared to the shepherds, the Bible says they were afraid, but they gave him good news that says, uh, the angel said, Fear not, for I bring you uh, glad tidings of great joy. What a great opportunity you and I have to celebrate our risen Savior. Yes, our, our, the birth of our Savior, but also a risen Savior. And uh, so with this Christmas season, let's sing with a joyful heart. For Christ has come. Amen, church. So glad that you're here. And uh, we just look forward to sharing the Christmas story with you tonight. Let's sing this together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations free. The glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his. Are you thankful for Christ's love tonight? Amen. Like I said, the word hark means to listen closely. I encourage you to listen closely to the message tonight. And at any point of the service, if you want to shout uh, uh, hallelujah, if you want to clap, if you want to rejoice, if you want to say amen or say oh me, that is fine as well. But we invite you to participate. Some of this will seem very familiar to with you, with you, maybe even know some of the songs that we'll sing. If so, feel free to join in and sing with us. But again, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And may we present to you now a man from Bethlehem that changes lives.
And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And as he said it meet with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Man, I am so hungry. I can't believe we missed a meal. I can't believe you missed a meal either, much less myself. Look at this. I know it. But I, I can hardly grasp this because it was him. We saw Jesus. It was it was him. It was Jesus. We walked and talked with Jesus on this road to Emmaus right here just a little while ago. Hey, did you hear that? Shh. Shh. Something. Shh. Was it lying? Tigers? Bears? Oh, my. What was it? Oh, my goodness, look. Where'd they come from? I don't know. Where did they come from? I don't know. Say they just kind of appeared. Well, say something to them. Come on. Hey, everyone. We didn't see you there. That's what actually what me and Cleo were just talking about. Seeing somebody that was right in front of us. So we were just walking along the road, and all of a sudden, Jesus. James, James, James. Look. Slow down. We don't want them to think we're crazy, okay? Right, right. You know, if we don't slow down and explain to these people, what we're talking about, we need to calmly explain to them what we're, you know, what we're just talking about here. You know, so they don't think we're crazy, okay? Ah, that's it. Maybe God wants us to tell you what has happened. Maybe that's why they're here. Right, maybe that is why we are here and they're there. Wait till you hear what just happened. James, Jesus James, just... James, hold on. Excuse me. I don't mean to be interrupting you. Remember? But if God wants us to tell you his story, maybe we shouldn't start with what just happened. Maybe we should start at the beginning and tell the whole story. You're right. It's just... It just, no, you're right. We need to tell this right. You know, this really is an important story. And Cleo is right. Me and Jesus on this very path was just so exciting. But we really should tell you the whole story. You don't have to excuse this kind of people. You know, we're really excited. And we really have it absorbed it totally ourselves. But what my friend just said here is true. Just moments ago... Right here on this very road to Emmaus, we were walking and talking with Jesus. It was him. It was our Lord and Savior. It really was. But, but Cleo, you said just a minute ago, we need to tell the whole story. Thank you. You're right. And if we aren't going to leave anything out, we better start at the beginning. Great idea, Cleo. You see, it all started when, when I was born about 31 years ago. My mom was a little lady, but my dad... James, not your story, please. <laughs> We're talking about Jesus' story. That was a pretty good way to do it. But we okay. don't want to know about your story. We right, want right. them to know okay. about Jesus' story. So start with Jesus. Start at the beginning of his life story, please. Oh, sorry, Cleo. That is a good place to start. All right. So you see, friends, it all started 33 years ago in a manger. Not in some magnificent palace or some huge mansion but get this just like in our stable back home where we feed our donkey in a manger <laughs>
at the beginning, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. You know, we've been told he was born in a stable. I was just little myself, but my mother told me it was during the tax census. You know the Romans and their taxes. Mm -hmm. With everything they take out, they should be able to afford a Messiah care or something. But there was no lodging to be found. It was just like the scriptures had foretold that the Messiah would be born of a virgin. In the book of Isaiah it says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. My mother told me shepherds came out of the fields to go see the child. Yes, that's exactly what I was told. And when you told about the angel that spoke to the shepherds and the multitude of the heavenly host that appeared, oh, what a night that must have been. Oh, and, uh, and they were talking about a great star. Others came guided by a great star. The star, the great light in the sky guided them. It had to be remarkable, kind of like today, when Jesus appeared. James, 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 would you stop running ahead? You're lucky I can't afford shoes right now. <laughs> Where were we? Um, oh, yeah, the star. You know, the light from that star must have been remarkable. But what was most remarkable was that tiny baby. He was what was the most remarkable. He was a human baby, but yet the son of God. His mother Mary was flesh and blood, yet her baby was God. You know, James, it's hard to understand, but the angel had told Mary that she would give birth to the son of the highest. That holy baby conceived in her womb was to be called the son of God. That's why that light surely must have been a sight to behold. But even more glorious was that tiny baby. God in the flesh, the light of the world.
I never heard much about Jesus when he was a child. Did you, Cleo? My mother told me all about it when, when we was born because of all the excitement. He didn't live that far from us, but I don't know, remember much about him growing up, though. Well, there was that time in Jerusalem when he got left behind. And I come to think of it, I got left behind a few times. Yep, sure did. Was that on purpose? Yep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yep. It's okay. Anyway, we're talking about Jesus, though. I think Jesus was about 12 years old. And his parents had took him there to celebrate the Passover. And then when they were headed back to Nazareth, Mary and Joseph realized Jesus isn't with us. Kind of like today, he was with us one minute and then gone the next. There you go again. Stick with the story. Remember, the whole story. Yes, Master. I like that. <laughs> so we were talking about Jesus when he was left behind in Jerusalem. You're right, you're right. Let's see. Then they had to backtrack for three days and found him back in Jerusalem in the temple. He was teaching grown men, listening to them, answering all their questions. Me and you weren't teaching in the temple at that age. No, we won't. At that age, the rabbi was trying to throw me and you out. <laughs> but we said it before, though. Jesus was remarkable. When Mary and Joseph found him, he said he was doing exactly what his father had sent him here to do. Teaching in a temple one day is a normal, but very obedient son at home the next. He may have been born of a flesh and blood mother, and Jesus was human, just like us. But he wasn't just like us. And we need to thank God for that. As a boy, he always did what was right. And as a man, he was the only person, the only one, to ever keep and obey all of God's laws. Yes, and as a man, all oh, the stories I could tell you. He gave sight to the blind man. He made the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak. The lame to leap. Oh, Cleo, I got to tell them right now. James, get back up here. We're telling the whole story, remember? Please. But Cleo, he even made the deaf live again. You're right, James. You're right. Friends, he has a right to be excited because only the God of heaven, the creator, the God of all the universe, has the power to bring the dead back to life. You know, I've heard Jesus called God with us. When he was born, as if heaven had come down to earth.
Oh, Clay, I wish I had seen one of Jesus' miracles firsthand. But, friend, you just did. What are you talking about? Today, James, today, on this very road to Emmaus, we were walking and talking with Jesus, our Lord and Savior, on this very road today, James. Whoa, 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 you need to slow down if I take David's slingshot and hitch up beside your head. Because you said earlier that these people do not know the whole story. You're right. Didn't you say maybe someone in this crowd doesn't know him, right? I did. I apologize, folks. Cleo was just really excited. Now, where were we? Let's see. We were talking about all they did, all that Jesus did before they killed him. Oh, my dear people, Jesus lived the perfect life. He never sinned, not even once. Not once did he sin. He was a servant, a friend, a healer. I mean, he sure was a great friend. Dude. Just think about with Lazarus and all. But Jesus was Mary's little child. And then he grew up to be a remarkable man. But they crucified him. James, they crucified him. crucified him. They crucified him. But hey, wait. Wait a minute. What is that? Wait a minute. Isaiah said, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And with his stripes, we're healed. James, don't you see? That's the prophecy of his crucifixion. He was crucified for our sins. His suffering, his blood that was shed, the beating, the stripes, his suffering were his sacrifice of love for us to pay for our sins. And old friends, the crucifixion of Jesus was so brutal, he was not even found guilty of a crime. Yet, he was scourged and beaten. And that's not physical pain. He was betrayed by his friends. And he was denied three times by another. And the masses, and the very people he came to serve and save, cried out of him to be crucified. The people turned on him. Yet, he shed his blood for them and suffered such agony for us. Earlier, you said Jesus was killed. Really, no man took his life from him. He gave his life. When he gave up the ghost, his death, his blood, was his gift freely given to us and to you. Yes, he really chose to suffer the cost of their, sh of their shame and their sin, our shame and our sin, my sin.
Jesus was crucified three days ago. When Jesus was dead, a man named Joseph took his body and placed him in a sealed tomb. But this morning, a woman, which came out from him Galilee, went back to the tomb, and the stone was rolled away from the tomb. Jesus was gone. He was gone. But friends, we just saw Jesus. Wait, James. Let me continue, please. And the angel spoke to them and said, He is not here, but is risen. The angel reminded him, saying, Remember, the Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then the women told the disciples what had happened, and then to the rest of us. At first we thought they were crazy. We didn't believe them, but now I believe. The truth, what they have told us. The good news that Jesus has risen. I believe, Cleo. I believe. I believe too. And there's something important that's happened inside of me. I felt so empty before. Remember how there was no place for Jesus at the end? It's kind of like I made a home for him right here in my heart. Just arrived, and with your first bride, you fit right into their arms, just like you did in the stable. Come do it all again. There's room for you.
babe in a manger is not the full story. And we have so much to tell. And before we finish the program, there's a couple more uh, scenes to share with you and a, few, a couple more songs. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Uh, there were shepherds there. Verse 9 says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold... I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe in swaddling, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. That's Luke chapter 2. I trust that you will share that with your family this year. But if you just share that story, may I say to you again that if you just share that story, you're not telling the whole story, then what is the whole story? The whole story is that Jesus was crucified, but he rose again on the third day. And see, therefore, if you want to have eternal life, then you must put your faith and your trust in the only one who's conquered death, the only one who's conquered hell, and the only one who has risen again, and that only one is Jesus Christ our Lord. See, the Bible says in Romans 3, chapter 10, or verse 10, that there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right now, you may be thinking, well, compared to so-and-so, I don't look so bad. And you may be right. And, and, and compared to other people, uh, like those in jail or whatever, uh, I'm not as bad as that person. And, and, and you may be right on that end. But the problem is you are measuring yourself by your own measuring stick and not by God's measuring stick. See, God says all have come short of the glory of God. No matter how good you are, no matter what you may do on your own merit, you will never achieve righteousness on your own. Remember in the story, James and Cleo uh, told you that Jesus was the only one who, who have never sinned, even as a child, even as a man. He always obeyed in everything. He always did that was what was right. But then why did he go to the cross? If the innocent, or if the cross was really for the guilty, then why would the innocent go to the cross? Well, there's only one reason. He went to the cross for you, my friend. God, See, there's no question about it, my friend. You have lied. I've lied. We've done it numerous times. We've taken things that didn't belong to us. We've probably used God's name in vain. And that's just three of the Ten Commandments. The bottom line is if we stood before God today, and if He judged us by His Ten Commandments alone, you know that all of us would stand guilty before Him then how do you and I become innocent? 
Here's where their good news comes in. Many you know, it's amazing. The Bible says that God has given a gift as well. The Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, God is a gift giver. If I was to give you this gift, and if you were to take this gift, and I'd say, I want to give you that gift, now you owe me $20. Is that a gift anymore? Why isn't it a gift anymore? Because he just purchased it, right? Right. The truth of the matter is, God is wanting to give you a gift today, this Christmas season. I'm reminded that Jesus said in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. You know what you earn in your sin? Spiritual death. But the gift of God is eternal life. God wants to give you a gift, my friend. None of you this year will sit around your Christmas tree or be with your loved ones or your family, and when someone gives you a gift, you'll say, Nah, I don't want it. I've never had that to happen. God wants you to give, give you a gift that is of eternal value. Because the truth of the matter is, is that as the song that the choir just sang is that Jesus came so you could give him a room in your heart. Do you remember the story in Luke chapter 2? I just read it where the Bible says that uh, there was no room for them at the inn. That's probably really not accurate. Not that the Bible is inaccurate. What I mean is there was room at the end. The innkeeper and whoever was there just chose not to give it. Truth is, all of you have room today, and all of you have room right now. And I'm not talking about when you take your nativity scene down or your manger scene and you pack up the little ceramic uh, uh, figurines and you put them in your attic. I'm not talking about that room. That's not the room that Jesus wants. He wants the throne room of your heart. And the truth of the matter is, is that all of us are here, that are here, all of us that are watching, all of us that are listening, all of us have room to give to Jesus today. It won't cost you any money, and it really doesn't cost you any time. All it costs you is the willingness to give up of yourselves and receive that gift. When I handed that gift to you, you freely took it. I didn't tell you to take it. You just took it. Why? That's what you naturally do with a gift. But many of you have heard the message. You've heard the story. But you, like many, have rejected the gift. package. But if you reject the gift that God is giving you today, you will be just like this package. And you know what that is? Inside this package, it's empty. I pray that today you will not go through another Christmas empty. Oh, out, outwardly you may look good to everyone else. Outwardly everything looks okay. It looks like you got everything together. But inwardly you are empty spiritually. You don't have to live that way. Matter of fact, you don't have to go on one more minute that way. You can choose the gift that God is giving. And that is His Son, Jesus Christ. You today can make your heart his home. With every head bowed and every eye closed, the Bible says that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made. But it's what you believe in your heart. You could say this if you believe it, and if you mean it, say this right now Jesus, I believe that what you did on the cross was enough to forgive me. Jesus, I choose you as my eternal gift. Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. And Jesus, I choose you. Maybe that was you. Maybe you chose Christ today. Maybe you are watching this by internet, and maybe you're listening, and that was you. I'm so thankful that if you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, uh, you have to mean it, not what I say or just because you repeat it, but you meant it from your heart. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, let us continue our story. Since Jesus has arisen from the dead, 
The world has changed forever. And I've been changed forever. Me too. It's like I was in a darkness, and now everything seems so clear and bright. You know, I know exactly what you mean about things, about life seeming brighter. Maybe even a little more hopeful now. It's like a light is now in my very soul, and I hope that I've never had before. That's exactly what I was trying to say. But Cleo, now that we get to tell our friends about what just happened before they um, appeared. You've been dying to do this this whole time. James, by all means, go ahead. When Cleo and I started on this road, walking, along, walking in the village to Emmaus, we talked about all these things that had happened. While we talked together, a man drew near to us and walked with us. And he asked us, why are you so sad? I looked at him like, where have you been? You just coming through, passing through? You new to town? You, haven't you heard anything? There's so much going on around here lately. He asked what things. So we told him the things concerning what happened to Jesus. You know, I told him, I said, we thought Jesus was our Messiah. But then he was crucified. He was dead. We've seen it. Can you imagine your king being dead? You know, I told him, I said, you know, we know he is dead, but we just heard he's alive. And so we were talking about the hope that that's given us. Then the stranger who walked and talked with us, what exactly did he say? Really, James? I forgot. Sorry. I can't believe you forgot. Well, I forgot. I'm just so surprised. James, he called us fools. He says something like, old fools, slow of heart to believe. And he asks us if we didn't believe what the prophets had said about Christ needing to suffer. Um, I think it was something about him needing to do it to enter into his glory. Oh, now I remember. I was shocked for being called a fool. But I took no offense. He seemed so kind and patient like he just wanted to help us understand. And he amazed us with his knowledge. He expounded unto us all the scriptures about Jesus. He explained them to us. Remember, friend, he said, what was it, Isaiah he said, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Yes, I noticed he quoted the scriptures perfectly. He said he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, and he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Oh, James, it makes sense now. All our lives were heard all those scriptures. Now we know that what it means, and they were true. But we got to get back to the story. As we drew nigh unto Emmaus, the stranger acted like he wanted to leave us and walk further. He asked him, we asked him to abide with us, which he did. It was when we sat and ate and we were breaking bread. Our eyes were suddenly open, and we knew him, and we just... We just saw that this stranger was no stranger at all, but it was Jesus. He vanished right out of our sight. I saw Jesus, Jesus risen from the dead. I know it. I walked with him. I spoke with him. I talked with him on this road to Emmaus. You know, my life can never be the same again, James. He went through all of that agony for me. He shed his blood for my sins. You know, that light in my soul, that hope, it's all because of him. The darkness is forever gone.
We're so glad that God gave us this opportunity to tell all of you about his son Jesus and what it was like to meet him and walk and talk with him on this road to Emmaus, and to, just to meet him in person. You know, Jesus was alive when we walked this road, and Jesus is alive today. The stranger we met on this road to Emmaus all those years ago, he was the babe in the manger in Bethlehem. Yes, and now we know that Jesus is our long-awaited Messiah, our Savior. Come on, we need to keep moving and to share this news with other people and to tell others the good news about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, look at all these people. I got to tell them the story about Jesus when he was came to the road to Emmaus. James, remember the whole story. Oops, sorry. Thank you.